I visited a soup kitchen in Jerusalem where my son and daughter-in-law were volunteers. I was so impressed with how they fed over 500 poor people every day with dignity. I came home to America determined to raise money to help them. The idea hit me. Why not combine stories from Holocaust survivors with their family recipes? This is a collection of 250 miracles. Come into my home as we make the recipes and read the story to all who eat. Let me share the miracles with you. Hi, this is Joanne Karras with Miracles and Meals and my adorable husband, Harvey. That's me. We have a great story we to do. share today. This is about a brother and a sister that would be hidden. And can you tell us who they are? Yeah, it's uh, Leon and Rachel Malmed and they were from France, and their story is uh, very, very powerful. Oh. We met uh, Leon first at a child survivors conference in Dearborn, Michigan, and he was nice enough to give us his yeah. story and a recipe from his wife. And then when he told his sister, he was from California and his sister is from Long right. Island, when he told his sister Rachel what he had done, she said, oh, I want to give you my recipe too. So this first recipe we're doing is actually Rachel's recipe but the story is about both of them so right it's and we're going to be making a stew with apricots and this is something you told me that your mother my would mother make used for to you. make yes yeah, but what is it really called she called it gedempta meat or they call it gedempta fleisch i guess that's the same thing yeah and uh it's sort of a beef stew kind of thing and it's, my mother was delicious i hope i assume theirs will be too yeah oh it is absolutely but you know what i want to tell you that we love the picture that they sent to us for our book, that we even put it on the front cover of oh, a yeah, Holocaust of the, Survivor cookbook. Right, the two little kids, yeah. Actually, and, and, and then the cousin, the cousin too, that didn't, didn't survive, survive yeah. and we'll tell you about that later. Yeah. All right, so let's get started now. First of all, I had to have my apricots soaking for half an hour. So these are, they've already done that, they're already. And they're already, soaking in what, now water? They're just water, I just took them right out of the box, put them in water so they're soaking. I'm gonna, if you turn on uh, it just gently, I think it might be. I'm yeah, gonna add just a little bit of oil because we're gonna start to brown our onions. So I'm gonna just chop that up. And then we're going to be adding, it's a very simple recipe because once you've chopped, it's going to be then adding um, all of this just in that one pot. Mm -hmm. And That's which nice. is great because you have one whole, you know, the pretty much the whole little meal there in that one little pot. So we're going to, we'll just put these in there. And this is the great thing about these. That yeah, you can, those are great. And if you can stir for me a little bit, and I'll get cutting just a little bit more. I'm Thank really good you. at this. Yeah, this is my I specialty. know. He's my great assistant Perfect. here. Uh, he's my great assistant here. And you know, I always try to say, you know, keep everything the same consistent size because then it does you know, everything will time. cook at the same time, right? That's yep. exactly right. And you know, your family, you decide how much you really like of an onion, all right? But the it does call for um, one, one on, onion yeah, and one two onion pounds of beef. And two pounds of beef. Now they call this a beef shoulder, but sometimes at the kosher market, it's going to be it's they're going to call it stew meat. Yeah. And it's already cut up, which is great because they already do it in the right size for you. So we're going to let you finish with, it, with this right here. Okay, mm -hmm. well, again, the same consistent size, and everything is going to go right in here if you give that a little more of a twirl. So, you're just trying to get the little bit looks good. You're Any starting to get the smell. Or not? Yeah, well, not just yet. What okay. we're going to do is I'm going to let you just stir that for a few minutes. I'm going to get you my, get the beef? my yeah. yeah, my chopped beef here, beef, and you can get the, the that in. right in here exactly. Ooh, yeah. All right, and we're going to just brown this up. Wonderful. Now the next thing it's gonna call for is a half of a bay leaf. So why, I don't know, why it's a half, half a of a bay leaf. You but never you know, wanna put a full bay leaf I, I, in I, three you know, I think it's even easier to pull a full one out, so guess what, I'm gonna put the whole, the uh -oh. whole thing this in could now, ruin so the whole if, recipe. That, if that could be all right with you. And <laughs> Sorry, what Rachel. we're gonna do is, we're gonna have the lemon, a half, um, I have a half of a lemon, cause I'm gonna squeeze one tablespoon um, of lemon juice in here, and we are gonna add, then be adding some water also, okay? So I'm gonna, gonna squeeze, oh, you see it's coming in here, that's just about right. And if you keep, oh, can you start to smell, yeah, 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 let's just turn that up just up a, little a little bit, bit so we can get that browning brown for just a few more minutes here. 
And then we're gonna we're gonna make this is a meat dish, and then we're gonna tell you the story. We're gonna come back, and we will be making a, a dairy, dairy dish. dish. So you know we will be using the appropriate right, things for that? this. Now this is our brown sugar and our cinnamon. It's one tablespoon of brown sugar, and then a half a tablespoon of cinnamon. And just smell this. This is what is going to mm. give such a yeah, it gives wonder. A zest to it, it, yeah. Right, it really is going to. So if you could get that all mixed up for us, mm. really spread I, I that tell all out. My mother out. didn't you use. Did... I, don't, I don't. What do I know? But I don't think she used brown sugar or anything like that in hers. So this is really kind of different. And then I'm gonna yep. be adding some water. So By the I'm way, you can see all the ingredients down below. Right. There. Okay. Now, what I did was I'm going to actually be using the the juices from the from the apricots and add a little bit more water because now we're just really everything is is done. The the apricots are nice and soft. I've added more water, so you're going to be adding, you know, just about the size of um, this, which would be just about the size of a water bottle, regular little water bottle, about eight ounces there. 12, I think the bottles are 12 or 12 16. ounces, 10 ounces, a little. That's <laughs> that's what we use yesterday. Very precise measurement. <laughs> right. So you could you want to just like, cover. Just like Bubba used just, to do it. Right. You just want to want it to cover. Cover it. And um, Get now the cover. this is actually going to be on low heat for two hours. Now and that's of course we don't have up. time. So what we did, we made <laughs> we made it yesterday. Yeah. I want you to see this. I mean uh, this is just Fabulous. Just, yeah, I just put some put, in a plate. You okay, want to put here, a little more, yeah. make it I, nice I, and hot. Look at, look at the apricots. Oh, mm. you know, just a little. This is the story of Leon Malmat and his sister Rachel Malmat, who now is Rachel Epstein. Uh, Leon lives in Pleasanton, California, and Rachel lives in Roslyn, New York, on Long Island. And uh, we first met Leon in, De in Detroit, in Dearborn, Michigan, and he gave us his story, and then his sister gave us a recipe to go with it and gave us a little more detail about the story. Right. And they were born in France. And as Leon says, we survived the Holocaust due to the heroism, sacrifice, and kindness of a Christian couple who chose to hide my sister and me when our parents were led away to the death camp. So many stories we have, Joanne, are from Jews who were saved because of the courage and, and kindness of Christians. And it's something we as Jews should never, ever forget. Okay. Uh, he said the heroes of the story are Suzanne and Henry Ribolo and their two sons, Rene and Marcel. They were our neighbors. They were the neighbors living downstairs in an apartment building, one floor below. And he tells the story. He said, my parents had emigrated from Poland to France, but Leon and Rachel were born in France. They made a good life for themselves in a city called Campagne, France, which is about 40 miles north of Paris. They owned a clothing shop. They lived in a nice apartment. Sister was born in 32, and he was born in 1937, so they're five years apart. He said, in 1940, when I was 33, three years old, everything changed. France was now occupied by the German army. Right. Jews had to wear the yellow armbands. They were no longer allowed to own a business of right. any kind, so yeah. they had no income. Jews couldn't go to public parks. Uh, they, couldn't, they couldn't own a radio. I mean, it was just unbelievable how things changed when the Nazis came in. And he said it kept on getting worse and worse, but the worst was yet to come on that faithful, horrible Sunday morning, July 19th, 1942. He said at 5 a.m., two French policemen knocked at the door and asked my parents to accompany them. They didn't give any reason. They just said, come with me. What about our children, the parents said. And it was deaf ears, as Leon said. They, they didn't care. The policeman said they'd been ordered by the Gestapo to arrest the parents, and that's what they did. Well, the neighbors below, the right. Ribolos, woke up and asked heard what's going on. They heard going all the commotions right. what going on. What's going right. on? And Leon and Rachel's father explained that they were being taken to police headquarters. They really didn't know why or for how long they'd be gone. Mm -hmm. But they asked the Ribolos if they would watch their children. Thinking my parents would return in a few hours, Monsieur Ribolo, a kind man, as, as Leon said, who always had a warm hello whenever we saw him, he said to my parents, Monsieur and Madame Mohamed, do not worry. Mm -hmm. We will take care of your children until you return. He said, Leon said, I have an image of my sister and I crying and clinging to my parents, begging not to right. take them away, begging the police not to take them away. 
But, but the, the Ribolos kept reassuring the kids, don't worry, and they reassuring the parents, don't worry, your, kid, your children are in good hands with us. And as Leon says, little did we know that that would never. be the last time we would mm. ever see our parents alive. And then what happened? And so that was the start of Jewish children hidden by a Christian family. Their lives would be in danger for three years because people would get awarded money if they would turn in Jews of any age. Yeah. It didn't make any difference. And not only would the Jews then be punished, taken away, but the family Families. that was hiding them. And so their neighbors said to them, why? Why would you risk your life, your son's life, for these little children, these little Jews, when they won't even remember you? But do you know that this family would take them and hide them and protect them. And even one day, somebody must have snitched because they came to the house and they got them out of the house and they had them go run and hide. And they were never found or caught for the three years. Mm -hmm. But on that same day, when they were able to get them out of the house and hidden, the little cousin who was just five, Charles, he would be captured just like as if they were out collecting stray dogs off of the street. And when they asked, please don't take this little child, he's only just five years old. Why would you take him? He's only a little boy. They said he was a Jew, and that's what they wanted. Mm -hmm. And they suspect that he died in a cattle car on his way to Auschwitz. He was with a different family. That's and right, they, and he God, was hidden he by was a hidden different too. family. And yes, he was, family, but absolutely. Unfortunately, he didn't make it and they did. But let me tell you how kind this family was. Not only would they risk their lives and take in these two children, but they even paid the rent for the apartment upstairs for three years. Can you imagine that? So that no one would take the apartment, hoping that after the war that they would come back. And they even had a little garden in their backyard because everybody's food was rationed during the war. No one had extras to give. And so they had a little garden and she would say to her two boys, don't eat so much, the children are still growing. And they would all be so generous in their heart and their home with everything. So you think about it, what did this family do? They risked their own lives, they risked their children's lives, and they and saved these did they? Children. And did those children forget? Absolutely not. Rachel and her brother Leon not only remembered them their entire life, but they would go back and honor her in such a beautiful way. And, and they nominated her as a righteous Gentile. That's right. And it's been in Yad Vashed, uh, the Ribolos are honored there. And they uh, also have a street named after them and the building, the apartment building, is now a historical building. We're so excited to be able to um, share that, that, late, that late bit of information with mm -hmm. everyone that yeah. just came about. So let's go back into the kitchen now and finish up. We're actually going to be finishing mm -hmm. with the um, potatoes. potato, like a potato, potato gratin, gratin, but yeah. it, you know, it's a French potato gratin. And, um, and we're so grateful again to Leon and Rachel for sharing their story with us. It's just a courageous story in the part of the Ribolo family. You know, we didn't say, though, I just wanted to share with, with everyone. After the war, those young children really believed that their parents would come back. Yeah. Yeah, Leon once said that he would look out every day and look at the boots of the soldiers that were, that were passing by, and there were always this, the German army. And then one day he saw different boots that was the American army, and he thought, they were bringing his mother and father back to him, but sadly, they weren't. If you would like more information about this story or any of the stories from our two books, please go to www.survivorcookbook.org. All profit from every book sold goes to the Karma High Era Soup Kitchen that feeds over 500 poor and hungry Israelis every single day. And now, for a Kosher Minute with Rabbi McCall. Hi, I'm Chef Rabbi McCall with the Kosher Minute for hints, tips, tricks, and more all about a kosher kitchen. Today we're going to talk about salting meat. 
Now, salting meat is a process which is required. After you have ritually slaughtered meat, according to kosher law, then you have to take uh, coarse kosher salt and cover the piece of meat with it to draw out the excess blood. Because blood, as we've learned before, is not a kosher food. So you just get this salt and you cover it with the meat and usually you should hang the meat to, to drip, have the drippings come out or have it in a colander to have the drippings go out there. And then you've got your kosher meat left. So for thousands of years, this was done in every single kosher kitchen. But luckily now, our butchers do it for us. So when you buy a piece of kosher meat from the store, it's already been salted. The Kosher Minute is brought to you by Yalda Magazine, the magazine for Jewish girls, by Jewish girls. For more information, please visit our website at www.yalda.com. That was such a powerful story. It, it is. It's one of my favorites. Do you remember when I met Rachel? Yeah. And yeah. it was in, it was on Long Island. It was on Long Island. And they had young students from Israel that came over to the United States. And they had her story. And they were sharing it with both the American children and the Israeli students. And they showed this video. Yeah, it's so powerful. Both Rachel and Leon going back to France honoring this foster mother. Do you know, I'd like to be able to show everybody that video right now. Yeah, just a little clip from it. It's so powerful. Let's look at it. To the last day of the war, it was our view of the world, whereby not only we saw the German boots, but we saw through this, <laughs> those windows, we saw the, the American coming to And now we're going to make Leon's recipe. Okay, good. Looks good. It is. Can you tell us what this is called, please? It's called Gratin Dauphinois. I took French in high school. So that's I'm right. Good at that. So that's why I had yeah. you. And I looked it up. Dauphinois it. means it's from the Dauphin section of France, which is, of course, where Leon and uh, Rachel were from. So it's appropriate we're okay. making a French, French a dish here. Absolutely. And, and what, so what it do we is, got here? it is a potato casserole that's going to be layered just like we would kind of do like a lasagna yeah, so you if you can just most people would call it potatoes or gratin right that's, I mean, that's exactly what gratin, right gratin absolutely means. so this is butter now this is a dairy absolutely <laughs> recipe so you have to make sure that you have all the appropriate things here so we have actually we have butter, butter. we have our potatoes all peeled now i use the um the yellow potato you could use what your family would like and all i'm going to do is just layer these here and 
this is what I'm going to need your help. We're going to mm -hmm. add a little bit of salt and pepper, please. All right, I can do okay. that. Salt. And pepper. pepper. And then I hope if I you're going to sneeze, I'm going to pepper. <laughs> okay, now you're going to add your cheese. Cheese, a okay. little cheese on the top. Yeah, oh. cheese. There you go. Tell All me right. When. Okay, that's good because I'm coming back. Oops. <laughs> All right, with another layer of my potatoes. Hold on, hold on. I didn't get mine in. <laughs> he's, <laughs> now he's had two. They are gone. We look like Lucy and <laughs> Ethel here. All right, now your cheese. Here, go, keep going. Your cheese. Okay, quick, quick. Wait, wait, Is right. the conveyor belt <laughs> moving by? Yeah. <laughs> All right, hold. All right, so now. This will be my last layer, and I'm gonna be adding my potatoes. The oven is on at 400. 400. Okay, this is gonna take an hour and a half. Hey, you're salty. <laughs> salty. A little, yeah, so, okay, now if you could put this on. You're already okay, salty enough, great, honey. I don't okay. need to add any more to you. Great, now you're gonna add that. And what we're gonna to need to do to finish this up here, Let's be generous with that yeah, cheese. Come stingy. on, we love all that. All, all right, right, so we here. put it in the oven. Now, make sure this was a Swiss cheese. Oh, yeah. You really need to go to the kosher market. You know, we find lots of products, you know, at our local grocery store if you um, don't have one that's right there near you. But I really do believe this. Um, you should go to a kosher market to make sure you get this. I'm just going to whisk up my one little egg here, add it to my one cup of milk and with both of these and all I'm going to do is now just pour this right over top all of this oh and wait to see after an hour and a half oh we made one oh, oh, we. yeah like I, I think you're ready for it aren't you and of course you know yesterday. I would look, just look top with a little bit of my ah. favorite salt and pepper spice here Play Cover with this here. with foil, an hour and a half, take it off the last maybe 15 minutes, watching until it just gets nice and brown, just like we have. Oh, careful, oh it's hot, I can't, it's, it's very hot. So you I'm want to taste it? it. Um, I'm going to let you, you know, oh, have that I love wonderful potatoes. I know you do. This is, this is my husband's absolutely favorite here. Mm. Mm, is that delicious? Wonderful. Thanks so very much for joining us today, Joanne and her adorable husband, Harvey. Until next time, mm, with Bye -bye. blessings.